We just got back from the Jose Feliciano show at the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. Not only were we delighted with the evening of entertainment, but we had the honor of meeting with Jose for a few minutes before the show. With a career spanning 50 years in music, on TV, and in the movies, Jose Feliciano is a legendary master who has received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Latin Grammys and has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Jose was the first Spanish-speaking crossover artist. That's right, the first ever to create a successful musical career in both English and Spanish. If you ever have a chance to see a Jose Feliciano show, don't hesitate. Just go. I promise you won't regret it. Jose Feliciano is a star of the highest quality. He's a true gentleman, and we very much appreciate the opportunity he so graciously provided to Conga TV. You may also enjoy the accompanying video with a few highlights from the show. Jose, it's an honor and a pleasure to visit with you. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to say hello to us. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to be here with you. We're with Conga TV out of Miami, and we're really pleased to, to be here and see your show. Well, thank you. It's a little different than, um, let's say, what you saw in Miami, because I only got to do three songs, and it wasn't with my band, even though the band that was there there was a great band, um, Antoine uh, Vig, great drummer, and all of the other great musicians that were there. Uh, but this is uh, this show is with my band, and and I, I have some great musicians, and I think I think uh, you will enjoy what we have to offer. We're very much looking forward to it. Thank you. The whole concept of Conga TV is about cultural crossover, and Anna is Cuban, and I'm American, and we've got our own little cultural crossover thing going on, and, and you invented crossover, and just and you've done a wonderful job at it. Who do you think is doing a good job with crossover these days? Well, it's really hard to say. I would have to say still uh, the leader in this kind of thing is uh, Gloria Stefan, I think, insofar as the fact that she can, she's very flexible in singing in English and doing it, uh, and doing it well. I think Gloria is uh, really one of the ones I know uh, people listen to um, uh, to Enrique Iglesias, but uh, I think I think as much as much as I like Enrique, I think Enrique has a long way to go before uh, mixing the both cultures correctly. I think at one time Ricky Martin had them together, but uh, I have to say, of the ones that are still around uh, in in one sense or another, I would have to say. Gloria Stefan really uh, is one. John Sicada, I think, in, for a while had it going, you know. Um, it, it's tough to say. There's so many good Latinos that are, that are doing it. You know, when I, <clears throat> when I started, that wasn't even what I had in mind. I just wanted to sing in both languages and record in both languages. I started out really in English back in 1964 when RCA signed me, um, and I did three albums uh, in English, and then I started my whole uh, career in Spanish in 1966, from 1966 to 70, but in the interim, in 1968, the album Feliciano was sandwiched in there, and so it opened all of the windows, and I was very lucky. Not only are you an ambassador across cultures, but also across generations. Our parents were fans, her Cuban parents, my Texas parents, we're fans, and, and we know a lot of younger generation that are fans as well. Do you feel like you're reaching the younger generation? Oh, sure. I hope so, because I'm not an old guy. I refuse to be classified as an old codger, you know? Uh, true. Um, uh, I'm at an age now that... I'm older than most people, but I don't feel that way. I still feel very young uh, in my music, in the way that I am, in the way I carry myself, and uh, all of those things. And, and I still try, in the way that I dress, I still try and make myself attractive to the opposite sex, uh, because that's very important too. 
Very Absolutely, and Hannah's got a big smile on her face. I think she agrees that you are. That's great. You, you have such a huge body of work throughout your life. If you set aside the biggest hits that we all know, is there any particular album or any particular period that you feel represents your best artistic vision? Well, you know, gosh, in this in the Spanish um, Spanish category, it's tough because I did so many great works. In English, the same. I mean, there's some the Feliciano album in '68, uh, albums like uh, Sold, which contained high heel sneakers, albums like. Um, Fireworks in English and um, 10 to 23. Uh, these albums were very, very uh, great albums for me. And then, of course, in Spanish, I had albums like Escenas de Amor, which was a really great album. It contained songs like uh, Volveré Alguna Vez, Para Decir Adiós, Samba Pati. Then uh, Me Enamoré, which um, for the first time in, a, in ever, uh, I had a Spanish song that I wrote that was a big hit called Paso La Vida Pensando. So I, I think every time I've done something, it's developed a facet of me that wasn't developed before. We actually downloaded The King recently, and we've been listening to that. We love it. What inspired you on that? Well, what inspired me uh, was the fact that I'm, I'm a big Elvis fan, I always have been, ever since I was 11 years old. And I wanted to do something different with Elvis's music. Nobody has really ever attempted to try and record Elvis's music uh, on their own because, I don't know, maybe they were afraid or they thought in their minds, well, nobody can do it any better than Elvis. Well, you know, I didn't think that way. Uh, I wasn't trying to do these songs better than Elvis, but I wanted people to see that one can do other people's music. You put your stamp to it, you put your flavor to it, and, and it's brand new. And that's what I tried to do with the kid. That's excellent. We really enjoy it. Thank you. You did download that song, the, the whole album actually, from Amazon. And I noticed you've got a lot of music on Amazon. How do you feel about downloading? Or do you feel it's helped you or it hurt you? I think it's made my music more available to other people because if we didn't have downloading in any way, once you were off of a record comp company, uh, certain albums stopped being produced and your fans couldn't get a hold of them, at least with Amazon and iTunes downloading things. Uh, it's easier for your fans to get a hold of past music and also present music. All right, that's great. We know you're getting ready for a show. We won't keep you any longer. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. It was a truly a pleasure. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. And uh, everybody, you're watching Conga TV.